A little bit about the 48th Imam. The 48th Imam, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan III, he became the Imam when he was only eight years old. And this is a picture of uh, Aga Khan III, uh, the day he became the Imam. So he's literally on a sort of a, a throne uh, surrounded by the elders of the community. And he was giving guidance when he was eight years old. He had a very illustrious career. Uh, his imamat lasted for about 72, 72 years. Um, these are just some of the accolades that he received. Uh, what I would point out is he was the founder of the All India Muslim League. He was a founding father of Pakistan. And uh, his career culminated when he was president of the League of Nations. So he has a very interesting international career. But I wanted to simply point out some of the theological insights that the Aga Khan III offered. Here is a quote from his memoirs. His memoirs were written for a Western audience. And in this quote, the Aga Khan expounds on the concept of God in Islam, but for a Western audience. And it's very interesting what he says, because he says that Islam's basic principle can only be defined as monorealism and not as monotheism. And what that means is that the character of Allah should be seen as a matrix which contains all and gives existence to the infinite, to space, to time, to the universe, and so on. The idea here being is that rather than seeing God as a distinct object and the universe as a distinct object, which both have you know, objective existence, um, God has to be seen as the absolute reality, the ultimate reality, and the universe is simply a very limited manifestation of that ultimate reality, such that if the ultimate reality were to cease to exist for a moment, the universe and all of creation would blink out of existence. And that's what he's trying to get to there. And then finally, um, the current Imam, Aga Khan IV, he is the 49th Imam of the Ismailis. Uh, he succeeded Aga Khan III, who was his grandfather. Uh, what's interesting about him is that he is the founder of the world's largest NGO, private NGO, called the Aga Khan Development Network, which aims to improve the quality of life uh, for human beings in, very diff in, in many, many sectors of life. And um, just something I'll show you. This is Aga Khan IV as a student at Harvard, Leverett House. He was an undergrad at Harvard. He was 20 years old when he became the imam. This is the Aga Khan in 2008 receiving an honorary degree from Harvard uh, next to J.K. Rowling. <laughs> and these are just a couple of pictures which simply show you that the current Aga Khan is a very um, internationally well-known figure. Uh, here he's meeting President Kennedy. This is at a conference at the White House. And in his guidance, both to the public and to the Ismailis. He's tried to emphasize um, the notion of Islam as a faith of compassion, knowledge, intellect, tolerance, and so on. These are just a couple of quotes uh, from his <coughs> public speeches and interviews. And if anyone is interested in reading more about the Aga Khan's statements on different issues, there's a website called NanoWisdoms. It's nanowisdoms.org. It's a searchable database of all the public uh, speeches of the Aga Khans. So the last thing I'll mention very quickly, uh, the Aga Khan Development Network, these are a list of its different agencies. So for example, AKA is Aga Khan Academy, AKHS is Aga Khan Health Services. But this is not simply philanthropy. In the mind of the Imam, the different agencies here are manifestations of Islamic ethics. So the work of the current Aga Khan through the AKDN is to bring social justice through the embodiment of Islamic ethics. So to close then, I thought since I began with the notion of Muslim diversity, I'll just end by quoting you just the, the, the end of uh, the Aga Khan's letter to the Amman conference. And he says at the end about the Ismailis, in keeping with our historic tradition of ever abiding commitment to Muslim unity, we reaffirm our respect for the historical interpretation of Islam by our brother Muslims as an equally earnest endeavor to practice the faith in Allah and to emulate the example 
off our holy prophet, may peace be upon him, which illuminates Muslim lives and which, inshallah, will elevate all Muslim souls. So thank you very much for your time.